Hello, Jackie here from Philips Dynalite training team. I'm here to show you the Envision project process for the Dali Multimaster product range. There are three products in this range and they consist of the DDBC120 Dali load controller, the DUS804C Dali universal sensor and the DPM1940 Dali dry contact interface. The Envision project process is quite similar to the processes for all of our other data controls and sensors. However, there is one important difference. The DALI multi-master sensors and dry contact interfaces have their configurations stored on the load controllers rather than on the device themselves, as with other traditional Dynalite products. These products are also known as master and slave devices. To assist with the tutorial today, I have with me a DALI multi-master demo case, which you can see in the inset window in the corner there. In the case, we have two DDBC120 DALI load controllers, two DUS804 DALI universal sensors, and two DPMI940 dry contact interfaces, and they're connected to two third-party mechanical switches. And finally, we have two DLP950 Dynalite panels. That will help with the process today. Now let's have a look at the processes in the Envision project. Here we have two DDBC120 DALI load controllers in the network view. The discovery processes for these devices is the same as for any other products we have in our range, so we don't need to cover that. Now once we have our devices discovered, what we should do is a pre-configuration check to make sure all the ballasts communicate to the controllers. This is achieved by pushing the surface switch on each of the controllers four times. I'll do the first controller. There you can see the lights flashing. I'll try with the second controller. And there we go. We can see that that one is also flashing. So I'm getting communication to all of my ballasts. Now to shut this down, I hold down the service switch for a few seconds. And the lights will come back on. And there is the second controller, like so. OK, so we have established that the pre-configuration check is good. Now we can continue with commissioning the ballast controllers. The first step in commissioning a DALI controller is to enumerate the ballast. So to enumerate a ballast, we right-click the selected controller. In this case, it's the first one and select Enumerate DALI. There are three options available. There is Enumerate All, Enumerate Ballasts, and Enumerate Devices. We will select Enumerate All as we're looking for both ballasts and devices. I click Yes to confirm the selection, and the enumeration process will take a few minutes for each controller. So I can kick off the second enumeration process as well. Like so by clicking yes, wait for a few moments as that completes. The DALI controller is now looking for the ballasts. As well as identifying, for the devices these can be seen in the DALI network tab once completed and in the channel editor tab as well. So the devices that I discovered will appear in the DALI Network tab and the channels with their assigned address will appear here. I have also noticed that the ballasts have been going on and off here in the training case window and this is used to create the addresses and help identify them.
That's the first controller completed. As you can see, we have the addresses that are known here. And if I quickly pop to the network tab, you can see the devices that have been discovered. Confirm the same for the other controller. Here we go, we can see that the enumeration has been completed. It also should be noted that we have the enumeration button available in both the DALI network and channel editor tabs. But they are just for their individual purposes. So in this case, for the network tab, it will enumerate just devices. And in the channel editor tab, it will enumerate just ballasts. Now that the enumeration is complete, we can go and configure our areas and channels. So this is done the normal way. So in the logical view, select the logical view. And here, we can see I've already created our four areas. So I have four areas, one for each bank or column, as you can see in the training case there. We have four separate columns of ballasts, and I'll just assign them accordingly. Over here on the right hand side, we have the unassigned devices tab. So expanding the load controllers options and expanding the first controller gives you access to the physical channels. And now it's just a matter of flashing them, naming them and assigning them to the correct areas as you would with any other configuration of a load controller. So I'll flash the first channel. You can see the first channel flashing is the first one in the second column or second bank. I can rename that now. One in the second bank. And then drag and drop that into its location onto the second channel. It is the fourth in the second bank. So fourth in the second bank. And the next one is the third in the first bank. And now we have the second in the second bank. The first in the first bank. The last in the first bank. third into the second bank, and the last one is for this controller is the second in the first bank. That's the first controller done. Now it's time to look at the next one. So that's just a matter of repeating the process again. Flashing the first one. We can see that it is the last in the fourth bank. So four, four for that one, dragging and dropping it. Now it seems that I may have dropped one here into the wrong bank. Now it's just a matter of dragging and dropping it here into the correct bank, like so, as you would with any other controller. third in the third, first in the fourth,
second in the fourth. First in the third. Fourth in the third. Only two more to go. And we can see this one should go second into the third. And the lucky last one is the third in the fourth row. And there we go. So we have now assigned all of our channels. Of course, we need to save them to the device to take effect. So Tools, Save Modified Changes for All Devices. And you can track the process. Here we go into the network view. Almost complete. Only a few more moments. OK, our configuration of our areas and channels has now been configured and completed and we can go into Add Devices. In the Network View, select a controller that you need to add devices to and then select the DALI Network tab. Here you'll see the devices that were discovered during the enumeration process. You will notice that they do not appear in the Network Viewers yet. They need to be added to the project. To do this, select the device and then click the Add to Job button. Do that for both devices and you can see that they now appear in the network view. You may also notice that the status change icon appears next to the ballast controller rather than next to the sensors. This is to reinforce that sensor and dry contact configuration information is stored on the controller rather than on the devices themselves. So I'll repeat this process for the second controller. Of course, I need to save those changes, like so. The download is now complete, so we can have a look at the configuration of the devices themselves. Now with our sensors, they are almost identical to the configuration processes involved with our other sensors. The only main difference is that the minimum timeout here that I have highlighted is set to one minute for the DALI Multimaster sensors. So there is a minimum timeout of one minute with these sensors. So that's the only change. Otherwise, the configuration is identical. With the dry contacts, it's even less of a difference. It is in fact identical to the configuration of our standard dry contact interface, the DPMI 940. So the options are the same as we have for our four dry contacts there, and the settings over on the right hand side of the properties. For further information, contact the training department or check out the training manual for the Envision project software. OK, let's move on and talk about wizards and maintenance. The DALI configuration wizard can be found in the menu bar under wizards after first selecting the load controller from the network view. You'll be asked whether or not you want to load the DALI channel information from the device that you have selected. I will select Yes. You can see down the bottom that the status for the load is visible and once complete we can expand our universes and we can start working on them. 
Now, there are four different functions with the DALI configuration wizard, and I'll bring up the show help option on the right-hand side to list for you. So here we have the four features that we can do. If I expand Add Ballasts, you can see that there's a list of instructions there to guide you through the process. So the four we have are Add Ballasts, Remove Ballasts, Swap Ballasts, and Replace Ballasts. Today, I'm going through the Swap Ballasts and Replace Ballasts options. Now, I have purposefully skipped Add and Remove Ballasts because the Replace Ballasts option actually combines both of those processes into one. So we'll do a swap ballast and then we'll finish off with the replace option. Now to swap the ballast, all we need to do is find the two ballasts that we want to swap and simply drag and drop them onto each other. You can see the icon there and that indicates which ballast is in play. And to complete the process, we save to device using the button at the bottom of the dialog. It's asking me to confirm. I say yes, and it's now writing that information to the device, like so. It's now complete. Now on to replace ballasts. We'll expand that firstly. To replace a ballast, we must first remove the ballast, and then what we want to do is add the new ballast here. It says to determine the online stays of the DALI ballast, we must click the query button. I'll click that button down the bottom and the status of the ballast is evident there. So if I was replacing another status that was offline, it would say offline. For today's purposes though, let's just change out of the bottom line, for example, once I select a channel, the menu bar at the top becomes available and I can hit the X to remove or the cross to remove. You can see the little cross symbol indicating that the ballast is to be removed and then save that information to the device. Say yes. You'll notice that the ballast is now on the channel that has been removed. It is now just completing the load. And now that's done, I can click the enumerate button down the bottom here. And by enumerating the controller again, we can locate that ballast. Of course, in a real world scenario, you would have physically replaced that ballast now between these two steps. Just a few more moments. And shortly, the ballast will show up as a little plus symbol. There it is. Okay, so the plus symbol here indicates that the new ballast has been found. It has given the same names as I had before because it's going to the same location. Now I can flash this if I want to just identify it like so. And once completed and once satisfied, we hit the save to device like that one more time. And there we go. There wasn't any changes to be saved because it assumed the address of the last ballast. So that is the wizard. It's very handy, particularly if you missed replacements in swapped ballast features, and I encourage you to use it. So that about wraps it up for this session today. Thank you very much for joining in, and we'll catch you next time.